Blur, Out of Time, on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Yep. Steve's a bit quiet, he's got a bit of a sore throat. Oh, a bit of a sore throat. Murder. All week. It's been murder, Rick. It's, we couldn't work all this week, um, no, because, been off, uh, sick. Steve's been in Brist- Carl, you're not impressed. It's just- I, I don't understand why having a sore throat <sighs> sort of- Oh, he's done you. Right, what if the sore throat was so painful it was like you've got broken glass and razor blades in your throat? You can hear now that I'm not even speaking from down in the throat, I'm speaking from the very top of it like that, so it sounds a bit weird. But you're right. What? Y your hands are alright, aren't they? Yeah, but we talk when we're writing, don't we? I can barely talk. It was in mur- it was mm. agony. I couldn't sleep because it was so painful. Even when I was just lying there, motionless, it was hurting. I, I just was surprised because we got back off holiday and, uh, called Ricky and said, all right, is Steve all right? And he said, uh, oh, he's, he's had to go back home or something and he's stayed there because he's, he's got a sore throat. Yeah. I didn't understand why you can't, like, just go home. I mean, you, you, how old are you? What? I don't understand why you've got to be at your mum and dad's when, you, when you're feeling I a bit ill. I happen to be at my mum and dad's, my mum and dad's, now I'm talking like you, when, when this, this sore throat mm. really kicked in. So I thought I might as well stay and get a bit of the creature comforts of home. Do you know what I pictured there when, when he told me? See, my parents aren't like yours, Carl. Your, your father would have popped down to the phone box and maybe looked to see if there were any kind of throat loss and Strip seals. Yeah. Whereas my mum phones up the doctor, first thing she can, I'm, I'm straight down there with my dad. They're, they're snapping into action, they're trying to sort me out. Mm. It's a bit like that Ronnie Corbett thing, isn't it? <laughs> what? Sorry! That sorry thing. <laughs> <laughs> you're right, Carl, yes, you're absolutely right. <laughs> it's just like that. Oh, no, dear. It's, it's just cause you I've just got... went on holiday with your parents. <laughs> well, not me, not with mine. No, with right. Suzanne's and it won't be happening again. So, well, that's we're, that sort we're, of We'll have more about that a little bit later. Pain well, we're, luckily we we came in a few times, didn't we? We've we, we been here since about half eleven, haven't we? Yeah, sorting Doing stuff out. Doing a show. What, have, um, you been, have you been squeezing his head or? Uh, no, that's that's strictly between the hours of one and three. We established that, okay. um, and I've kept the rules, haven't I? I did practice the grip in the week, didn't I? Yeah, just what? to see what method he was going to use today. Yeah, um, I came. In, I, I I did my back on Tuesday. I was sparring, and I pulled my back, and I was in agony, and I get an emergency um, uh, chiropractor out and sort it out, and I couldn't. I was on painkillers, and I couldn't walk the next day. But I still came in and did a voiceover that was booked at four thirty, didn't I? I got Johnny to walk me in because I couldn't sit down, so I couldn't take a cab. But I could be upright, and I had to walk. Uh, got him to walk me in because I was scared someone was going to bump into me, and I did the voiceover. That's dedication, isn't it? Yeah, but right, I got back off holiday on the. Uh, on the Tuesday, right? Um, first day back was going to be on the Wednesday, right? So I thought, well, I'll take it easy, cos you do that, don't you, when you've been on holiday? Mm. The first day you just wanna sort of- I don't, I'm straight back into it. Well, yeah, yeah but, but, but it's nice to, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, just sort of look at your emails, go through all them, work out what mm. people need and stuff. Sure. Doss around, doss around, yeah, sure. Um, so I thought, I'll take it easy. Soon as I got in, I was told that Ricky had been booked in to do a voiceover. And I thought, oh. Can't handle that. Do you know what I mean? On the first day, him coming in, annoying me, probably trying to get a week's worth of head squeezing in. <laughs> so, like, oh, so I called him up and he said, oh, I might not come in because I've got a bad back. I thought, well, that's all right, right? Uh, then you just turned up, didn't you? He said, yeah. oh, I managed to get in a cab. Yeah, and Johnny um, walked me in, and that, that's what, yeah. And, and he, he did, he did the stuff, which I haven't got it here at the moment, but I'll, I'll find it on the system and I'll play you uh, what he did. <laughs> that he's been paid to do as well. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, do you? Well, it's, it's not all right. <laughs> I had to pretend it was all right when I played it to all my bosses <laughs> to try and well, let's, well, look, let's play that a little bit later. But now, as we're all back together, Steve, would you say the boys are back in town? Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> then Lizzie, boys are back in town on XFM 104.9. Right, we are back in town. <laughs> Me, Steve and Carl. Carl's on holiday. <sighs> Steve's been living with his mother because he had a sore throat and I've I've been hobbling around still trying to do you know what, keep what, things going. Do you know why I think I was ill? Stress. I genuinely think it was stress. I think- I, I'm beginning- no, I'm analysing it. What do you think I'm, of that, Carl? But I'll tell you what it is, look, think about it though, we got- like, we live in London, we got the war, the threat of terrorist activity. That's where <laughs> I live, I'm alright. Next one. We got <laughs> SARS. One. Yeah, but well, you can walk to work, I got travel on the tube, I came in this morning, I saw a Chinaman sneeze, I was terrified. <laughs> S Club 7, they've split up. I mean, I, I worry about those sort of people. They're young kids, they're talented guys. I mean, they say they're gonna be alright. I'm not sure Tina is. I'm not sure she's got the talent. So, there's just so many elements that I remember you were worried about hearsay. Oh, well, Kim Marsh is doing alright. Well, Kim's it's... doing fine, but she got out early. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, I'm not sure the rest of them will be. You know, no. I'm just- uh, They're quite emotional. I've got to worry about the show, I've got to be worried about this, you know. It's, it's, it's just me. I, 
I've never been that good when, like, anyone in the family's ill or anything. I've just got- just because that's the way I am, do you know what I mean? If I'm ill, I don't expect people to run about No, after well, me. I've never been off for being ill. I mean, you were. Did a couple of yeah, weeks ago. Yeah, but that's- that's- but hang that on, I've not missed- I've not missed either of the shows. I'm- I'm ill today, but I'm still here. You- you took a- I seem to remember you took a- you took a show off when you were ill. Yeah. You were windy, I, I was really ill. Hmm, right, sure. I couldn't- I couldn't even walk to work, though, yeah. that's what I mean. Did you go to the doctors? No, I was oh, too right. ill to get there. Right. <laughs> that's did how you, bad did, I was. Did you call the doctor out? No. <laughs> no. Interesting. But it's just yeah. that th I mean, we were talking about it last night because we were saying to Suzanne, I said, oh, Steve's, you know, he's been living at home all week. She said, oh, is he really <laughs> I like the way he talks right behind your back as well. <laughs> Thanks. And, yeah, uh, and she said, uh, yeah, so what's up with him? I'm a lingering geek. And uh, said. I said, oh, he's, he's got a sore throat or something. She went sore throat? Oh. So, um, she said, well, you don't know how serious it is. Don't be, you know, don't be off hand with him tomorrow because, you know, if he's coming in and he's still not right. Because she's, she always sticks up for you. Yeah. Right. Um, and she because said, and anyway, some sense. she said, and anyway, you're no good when people are ill. I said, hang on, what are you talking about? So, um, apparently, when we first sort of started going out, the first time she was ill, she kind of thought, she saw the real me. Because she was Ill, Ill in bed and that, and I said, oh, get up. <laughs> of and, uh, course you can drink the, you can drink alcohol with these. <laughs> and I just was like, you know, y you make yourself feel worse if you lie in bed. I said, come yeah. on, we need to go shopping. <laughs> And she said, you go shopping. I said, no, I'm not, cos I'm rubbish at shopping for food. Do you know what I mean? I'm all right at getting that night's food, but once it starts, like, you've got a plan. Sure, yeah, you're dropping the bananas, I, you know yeah, what Yeah, I forget doing. all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Cos they're got all over the floor. Well, yeah. she was, she was, like, feeling hot on that. She said, I've got a temperature. I said, well, come to the supermarket and hang about in the chicken. <laughs> frozen chicken section, cool yeah. yourself down. Yeah, sure. And, um, <laughs> it, it made her worse. So <laughs> now she was like, do you remember that? And I was kind of oh. like, yeah. Who's that, who's that hot woman sitting in the chicken fillets? Yeah. That's yeah. Carl's girlfriend. No, she's, a, she's obviously ill again. Even when I was younger, do you know when I told you that I was picked at school to give old people biscuits? Right, yes. Cos you had nice hands, wasn't it? Cos had nice nails, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, because I, I went down a storm at that, I went down a storm at that. He said, Bravo! Get him back with the Garibaldi, he's the best I've ever had. Bravo! No, what do you mean you went down a storm? Because I, I'm into biscuits, so. <laughs> you knew your stuff! I was talking to him about. I'm them. into biscuits! Right, so, um. Then Did the you make sure that they finished the first layer before you dipped into no, the second layer? No, there's no rules like that. Just no rules. What do you want? What do you want? What do you fancy? Yeah. So, um, then because I was good at that. We, we were going to like a, an old people's home where they're a bit iller, rather yeah. than just being old. They were like ill. Yeah. And I said, no, not not doing that. <laughs> not going there because they're old people. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't want biscuits. Well, yeah, that's the they're too old to eat. So uh, yeah. So did you have to dunk them in tea before you fed them to them? No, it was just like. You did know, you feed them? Like did you have to chew? Did you have to chew their food then stick it down their throat with <laughs> yeah. your face? It's like a little bird. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. A little trolley, right? Yeah. Um, a lad who I didn't really get on with. He, he had good nails as well, so he was serving the tea. Yeah. And I just had a chat and said, oh, do you want a biscuit with that? Yeah. What about this one? Do you like bourbons? <laughs> yeah. Oh, you really did the whole... <laughs> so yeah. Oh, right, so you weren't just, it wasn't like their choice, you offered a selection. Well, I sort of sold them, because the thing is, there's only so many, so you've got to handle the situation well. Sure. You don't want too many in one type, so it's no. like, well, you've had a bourbon. Yeah. <laughs> What a great life they lead. Yeah. They probably only pay about 900 quid a week to stay in that particular home. <laughs> yeah. And they get a free bourbon by a kid with clean nails. <laughs> Brilliant. whoop de hoo <laughs> oh. So anyway, I found these, uh, things, do you know oh, yeah, yeah. So, so what's this, the, explain this again. Right, so, I got back off holiday. The first job I find out I've got to do is work with Ricky for a voiceover. I do right. a regular thing, I do X-Ray magazine, but I'm allowed to make the script up. And they said I could, so I did. Right. So, imagine this. Well, I know you, Rick, and I know you like to put a lot of work into these things. Yeah. You want to do a good job. So he rolls up, he says, let's do it then. He said, what's in the magazine? I said, well, there's a selection of stuff, this is what you've got to sell. He said, leave it with me. Um, he goes into the little booth, um, and the first one he comes up with is this little advert for it, right? X-Ray magazine, it's out now, it's a three pounds fifty May edition, uh, uh, music of tomorrow, Dandy Warhol's picture, and there's a free CD <laughs> with all the placebo and the donors, and uh, smog, and nightmares on wax, and Alpine All Stars, only three pounds fifty, it's out now, buy it, innit? <laughs> Have you got a sore throat there? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's alright, isn't it? And he was going, you can't, I said, we are doing that, I've done one, that is it, that's it. So I persuaded him, he went, right, okay, we can possibly put that on XFM, right? I I'll have to see, right? And so I wouldn't do it again. And he went, but you need one for capital. 
Is it right. Capital will know what I went, right, I'll do one more for Capital, right? Because all the stations advertise the XFM yeah. magazine, right? So this, this is the, uh, the one that you thought would be alright for them. Ooh, hello, you loonies in Radio Land. Dr. Frog here to tell you about the new edition of X-Ray magazine. It's out now and it's only £3.50. If you've not heard of it, it's a great music magazine. And you get a free CD featuring bands like Placebo, they wear makeup, but leave them alone. Gold Chain, Smog, OK Go, The Donners, and all great bands that you'll you're love to- Froggy here, hello. Hi! Ribbit, ribbit, Froggy says, bite it. <laughs> oh, well. So then, <laughs> he says that's it. He's going to see, is Dr. Worth. Frog still on there? <laughs> he's still passing. I said, that isn't going to go out. They're not going to be happy with that. He said, you've had your money's worth, I'm going. Yeah. So I'm left with that. <laughs> I then have to get the bosses in. And because I've let him go, in a way, it's my responsibility. Yeah. So I've, I've obviously thought I've got what I need. <laughs> I had to play them to the MD. What did and, he say? And justify. Well, I was sort of thinking if I laugh, he might go, well, I don't get it, but he finds it funny. Oh, brilliant. Well done. So I was laughing, he was sort of thinking, you know. Excellent. Is that it? Brilliant. When do they go out then? Uh, I think, I think one of them's going out at the moment. Excellent. I think the first one's going out. Brilliant. Well, let's, uh, let's play a great track then. Is it Dr. Frog? <laughs> well, I'd like to see Dr. Frog feature maybe on our show more often. <laughs> okay. Oh, I've got some new comedy characters. I can't believe my luck. You know, I love, uh, the work of, um, comedy greats like Chris Moyles and Noel Edmonds. I've got some really funny comic characters that'll be popping in and out of the studio. <laughs> Save them. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> Badly drawn boy. All possibilities on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Hilton, and a few a few new characters. Oh, Steve, I can't believe as that. you said, you know, you, you, I mean, you, I know you love Moyles and his his sort of wacky stuff and Chris Moyles, Edmonds one of the greats, one of the and greats. Edmonds and just all oh, the. No, 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 no. Um, well, I'm going to go along the same sort of vein. I've come up with a couple of. Can I do a little? Can I show you? I'm one? excited. Okay, well, it always starts with a sort of doorbell, okay. so. Goes uh, ding dong. I go, oh no, hold on, Steve, hold on, Carl. Who's that at the door? Yeah. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, look. It's Camp David, the right queer gay. Oh, hello. Hello. You you look all gay today. Is that because it's nice weather? Oh, no, that's not what it means. Oh, have, have you got a girlfriend, C Camp David, the right queer gay? No, but I've got a boyfriend. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, bye. <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, Ding yeah. dong. Oh, it's another yeah, one. On. Another comic. Hello. Oh, look. It's... Holy fuck, the little funny right. Chinese fella. <laughs> Wait, yeah. that's his name, Carl. That's his name, Carl. Carl. Hello, holy fuck. Hello. Yeah. Right? Yeah, 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 that's yeah, fine. So, that's fine. Um, Mr. Fuck, you can call me holy right. if you want. No, I'd prefer to call you fuck. Yeah. Right? You're right. Nothing You're wrong right. with this so far. I'm no, right. no, no. Um, um, have, have you got a, a girlfriend, Mr. Fuck? Achoo. Oh, okay. oh, you haven't got that SARS, have you? Yeah, yeah. Top no, one. that's my right. girlfriend's name. Oh, See? Oh, yeah. That's oh, uh, just before you go, Mr. Fuck, <laughs> I've got, um, I've got two, <laughs> I've got two things here. I've got a nice trilby hat that you could wear. Yeah. Or I've got a little lampshade. Right. Right? Which one do you want to put on your head yes. and walk around? I presume the trilby. No, but it's not. No. Yeah. yeah. Lampshade. Lampshade, of course. Bye. Yeah. See, ya. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> I thought they were <laughs> genius. Can I be honest? I, I mean, I'll be honest. I thought they Go were on. brilliant. I thought they were. <laughs> you didn't. I mean, you didn't steal them off Chris. No, 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 no. They're original. They're original. Sometimes characters. Chris Moyles has done stuff as good as that. I know. Yeah, yeah, I know. But no, these these are all mine. So. So, uh, there you go. We'll be, we'll be, um, we'll be hearing more from, um, Camp David, the right queer gay, and oh, how the fuck the funny little Chinaman. What? <laughs> All right, Carl? Mm. Yeah? Is that your sort of humour? It might not be your sort of humour. You just should have run it past me before you did it. Yeah. What one are you worried about in particular? The, uh, the, the, uh, <laughs> not Camp David. Well, no. say his name! No. Say his name! Which one? Out. I don't know which one, one you mean. The Chinese fella. But <laughs> well, I, I forget who that was. What was his name? I can't remember. <laughs> well, if you can't remember, it can't be that good, so we'll leave it. We won't do it again. Right? I'll tell oh. you what I've got, Steve. Oh, what? I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Go yeah. on. Right? Um, do you know, like, TV programs sort of get rested in the winter? Ding dong! Oh, no! Hey, I'll lose this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go on. Oh, Hello again. Not, not now, Mr. Fuck. We're talking. <laughs> Bye. Is that Holy Fuck again? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Cat cock. <laughs> Look at Carl's face. Right, okay, that's it now. I'm not answering the door anymore. Right, okay, go on. Right, um, yes. Ding dong, ding dong, ding no. dong, ding dong. He's trying to get in. You got to, don't be impolite, Rick. Come on, Rick, he wants to come in. <laughs> no, it's too late. It's too late. He's, he's, he's gone away now. Go on. Right, anyway, what I'm nice thinking hat. is, what I'm thinking is, Rockbuster's coming back for a bit. What? <laughs> what, what are you talking about? <laughs> he likes my idea, he likes my characters, he doesn't like that idea. If I ca- uh, what? <laughs> go on, what, go on, No, what? I was gonna say, if I came up with, uh... <laughs> with what? Name with it? that, with that Chinese fella. What was his name for a sketch? Again? <laughs> you wouldn't have liked it. Uh, so let's, let's do Rockbusters and see how it goes. I know you weren't a fan of it, but... Hang on, yeah, but thought... to, be, to be honest, Carl, he dissed cheap as chimps, and we know that's a brilliant idea. Hang on, sorry, we d- we we all agreed that Rockbusters was a piece of old toss. No, I didn't. <laughs> I said it needed. And that's why we stopped doing it. I said it needed resting for a bit. I don't remember that conversation. What do you mean it, it needed resting? Just we, we abandoned it because it was appalling. You just you, you. It started off as a nice idea, but you just gone crazy. It no, it's, it's let's play a record and come back to this, shall we? What do you want to play? Bit of sugar. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Brilliant. That cheers all up. I don't know why you were thinking of bringing this back. I'm genuinely worried about this. Well, <laughs> is that the doorbell? Uh, <laughs> yeah. I would be lying, Rick, if I told you that that didn't feature in my list of the best singles ever. That's lovely. It's a if I can't change your mind. Great, great pop tune. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm, I think Carl's worried about one of the names of my characters, so I'm changing. Uh, the the gay fella's name to David Gray, the bent pianist. Right. <laughs> the scientist, Coldplay, on XFM 104.9, with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington, and Ricky Gervais, obviously. So, uh, Carl's just getting a little bit frustrated there with Steve. I've been nothing to offer after being off for a week. Do you know what he calls you now behind your back? Oh God, here we go. No, it's quite. It's all right. He calls you the professor because of a picture of you in um, my media. Oh right. <laughs> it's what did you say? He said. It did you approve it? <laughs> I didn't actually. No. <laughs> no, you know what it is, don't you? It's you know when you take it from an angle. It sort of distorts one side, and right. they've taken a picture from a bigger picture, I think, and so. It's, do you know what I mean? Like he's look, looking in a kettle. Right. And he went, what's going on there? He said he looks like one of those professors of BBC Two Schools programmes. <laughs> well, I take that as a compliment, considering what I call you behind your back. <laughs> and I say, no, ain't the professor. <laughs> well, though, Carl's looking pretty good at the moment, aren't you? I'm oh. surprised, can I just say, I'm surprised that you, that you got chosen for having clean nails at school. To serve the biscuits, because I, I, I always imagine you. When I look at you, I see you as a child. I see you as a grubby little child who's always out in the street. I getting think Carl is quite hygienic because he's always got a nice little. Nowadays, I do. Yeah, nice but little not, top not, the, on. Not, not the boyhood Carl. I always uh, imagine you being quite neglected. <laughs> no, me, me clothes weren't always the best, and they were a bit warm, but they were always clean. Yeah. yeah. Is it, is I this a country imagine song coming on. Is, gonna <laughs> do, is it, are you Dolly Parton? <laughs> I always imagine your house as having, and actually, to be fair, so do, I imagine your house being very much the same. Always stinking of chip fat. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. yeah. My, my mum was always cleaning. So again, the, it, it was always sort of like clean. It was just yeah. it, it smelled. It smelled and cigarette of, smoke, maybe. Uh, yes, yeah, it smelled of Dettol, um, pets. Yeah, and uh, and cigarette smoke. Yeah, and chip such fat. a working class and smell. Chip fat, yeah, yeah. That's a real working class. Uh, Sort of smell and look and stench. Yeah, Are you talking about me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. the interesting thing is that Carl's cleaned up his act. <laughs> I'm very, I clean. I have two baths. No, I, no, I, you're obsessed. It's I love. Freaking. I love. Is this really bad of me? I was in uh, Waitrose earlier buying a sandwich. I got a bit of money now, Carl. I like to splash out on a sandwich. I like two pound fifty. You ever seen any of it? Benji's shop. <laughs> Go to Benji's. I'll tell you what, I love we go for lunch, right? And if he looks in the restaurant and it's sort of like six fifty, he goes, Rick, I'm not made of money. Yeah. It is. Mm. We have to go to Benji's. He gets two sandwiches that have to fill him up, right? Because they're a quid well, each. I'm a big guy, but I'm a big guy. I need a lot more food. I need, genuinely need more food than most people. I'm like a Brontosaurus. It is. He's just grazing all day. So I'm, that, you know, I, I can't afford to sort of splash out in pret a manger all the time with your, your fancy f- French sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, you know, I like to get a lot of bread for my money. I want a lot of bread. Um, so I was, I was in Waitrose and some guy came in behind me. Yeah. And he was sort of, I don't think he was mentally 
uh, Dulali, but I think he'd been homeless for just too long, and he was really. Uh, what, what's what's just right at the time to be homeless? <laughs> well, I think it was. You want to get out? You want to get out of that game early, don't you? He's yeah. past <laughs> the point of no return. This guy. <laughs> right, I yeah. think it was like it was too late for him. Oh, I think okay. there was no going yeah. back really. Um, <laughs> Six he, months. He came in and he was sort of walking at a bit of a weird angle. He walked like the elephant man, even though he wasn't deformed. It was probably like you were in the week. It was quite. Yeah. It was quite unpleasant, and he sort of came up to me and he went. Uh, and he, and weirdly, he spoke a bit like I'm speaking now because of my throat. And he was, and I thought, if I speak to him back, is he going to think I'm taking the mic? So I kept quiet. Mm -hmm. And he went, ah, oh, all right, what's your name? And I said, uh, Steve. And he shook my hand. He forcibly took my hand and shook it. But he had these cuts and bruises on his face. Ah, oh, the open sores. Yeah, and I, and he was shaking my hand, and I was just terrified. I was just thinking, get off my hand, let go of my hand. And thankfully, I, so did he have a bow round his neck? Well, he may as well have. I mean, seriously, and I, I caught the eye of a security guard. I had him thrown out. You know, <laughs> I'm all hard. This man does not have the funds to be <laughs> shopping like, here. This is Please have him removed. This is part of the John Lewis partnership. <laughs> yeah. And, um, so they had him thrown out. And you know, I, seriously then, I was just freaked out. I had to wash my hand as soon as I could. I just, I, it was just, I couldn't imagine the kind of grime that was crawling across whether it's kind of homeless ways. Are you, are you still, me. are you still doing your social work? Or you, <laughs> have Whenever you, I can, Rick. Yeah. Yeah. At least he used to give it to old people biscuits. You'd have gone, oh, I'm not going to them. Look at them gums. Wouldn't you have, wouldn't that have been grim? Would you have wanted that though? Old, like, old kind of homeless people touching you? Uh, well, no, it's I'm not. I'm not Jesus Christ. No, I know. I know. It's not on the list. <laughs> I don't have a shopping list. Oh, what do I know? I need some batteries from a Walkman. I need to be touched <laughs> by some old people. See you later. Cheers. Oh, so this is, I was watching, uh, the one thing I did watch all, all week was Columbo, which seems to be on oh. constantly. I was watching Columbo, and I know you're a fan of Columbo, Wick. But one of my favourite programmes of all time. But right. I was like, do you I not think that he- it. All right, all right. I just thought you were going to talk about it. Well, so. well which one? They, 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 they made it? about uh, 90, and they're showing on about four channels in rotation. But it doesn't matter if I tell you who did it, because you'll find out in the first two no, Yeah, exactly. You find out in the first two minutes I mean, anyway. Let's be honest, if Robert Vaughan's the star, it's probably going to be uh, him. Or, or Culp. Often Robert <laughs> Culp. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes Patrick McGowan. <laughs> but do you not think that Columbo looks like he smells? Would you imagine he smells a bit? He's a brilliant detective. Well, he's I, got that dog, and he smokes cigars, so I imagine he sm I smells. I reckon he stinks. I reckon he doesn't clean his clothes enough. Oh, I think he has a, I think he gets up and washes, but I, I think, think if it's I just think he's too absent-minded. I think he's too busy thinking on solving crimes and stuff. What do you think, do you think his wife love, makes I think him his, clean I think his quite, pants quite, down again? I think they're quite a bohemian couple. I'm not sure she's really interested in that. I think she's kind of, she's got her own mind. Maybe she's a painter or something. No, you maybe, know. maybe she's, uh, she's losing it a bit and he's a bit embarrassed by yeah, it. Yeah, that could be the truth. And she's probably true. incontinent, so while she's ironing his trousers, she just, just <laughs> all over them and he goes, yeah. oh, my God, she's shattered my pants again, I gotta wear the belt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's what. oh, ding dong, <laughs> who's that? Is this? Oh, hello, oh, look, it's, it's David Gray, the bent piano player. Oh, all right. I thought it was gonna be Columbo. That would be the joy. Ding dong. <laughs> Oh, right. and, uh, my wife loves you. Yeah. Hello. Oh, I don't believe it. Look who's doing that. Do you, uh, do you want to do Rockbusters, Steve, now? Can we come Okay, listen. It? With the whole Rockbusters thing, I, I don't want to be responsible for bringing it back. So, I think we should put it to the vote. You should be email in. We'll give people five minutes to email in. I'll take a straw poll. Do you want to see the return of Rockbusters or not? We're leaving it to you right. and the audience uh, to decide. Okay, Steve. Uh, I guarantee it's going to be a landslide. They are all going to want it. But why have we ever trusted our listener? Rick. We know what they're like. You've just described some of them with a the bloke in white trousers and Columbo's wife shitting herself. So <laughs> that's the sort of people that, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was actually, it was weird because the waitress guy did ask for my autograph before he was hauled away. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he is a listener. But all I'm saying is maybe there's some, maybe the posters have drawn in some fresh blood. There's some people who've maybe not heard Rockbusters before. They're the ones who probably vote for it. Anyone else who's heard it before, surely they're not going to see the return of that. No one wants to see oh, the return of that. Oh, what's the number? No, that's email only. We don't it's want to speak to these freaks. It's email. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Dr. Vega, I love the fact we don't want to speak these screens. We work with one of them. Yeah. God. Yeah. If you want to see the return of Rockbusters, vote yes. If not, no. Tone it down a bit. Let's not do three. No, I, I, it's got to be three, otherwise oh. it's too easy. Oh. Ricky Dr. Vega, xfm.co.uk. Oh. Right. Just choose the best one. Right. The Seeker from The Who. Brilliant. Classic rock. On XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. All right, well, unsurprisingly, the overwhelming consensus is that people would like to hear the return of Rockbusters. I should, however, point out just some of the some of the no responses. Uh, let me see what we've got is here. Is Dickie Anderson calling yet? Sadly, nothing from Dickers. I think I might make him one of my um, hilarious yeah. sort of comedy <laughs> characters. What do you think he would sound like? 
Um, what would he sound like? He's sort of probably like that, <laughs> I think. <laughs> Ding dong. Hello. Hey, it's, hey, it's Dickie Anderson. I can't believe it. Your show's rubbish. Something like that? I, I mean, I think you should work on them perhaps before you, you, you're saying there's not a lot of substance these I'm cars. just saying that, you know, once the novelty of the doorbell is, <laughs> is worn off. Yeah. Um, I don't think you understand comedy on radio, I'm Steve. I'm not sure I do. But to be honest. Like, listen, I'm, listen to Noah Levens, listen to Moyles. You'll see, you don't need to riff with it. It's just, you just do the doorbell and just say they're here. <laughs> right. That's okay. all you need to do. <laughs> sure. So, sure. that's the main thing. Well, so we've I'm, had a couple I'm thinking of, of some more characters as well. Well, keep working on those. Yeah. Marcus has emailed, um, he says no to Rockbusters, he hasn't heard it but it sounds rubbish. Believe me, you, you couldn't be more right. Well, does The Office sound good as a title? <laughs> right. Uh, this is someone else, don't bring back Rockbusters. Please can we have more holy fook? <laughs> <laughs> You're not pronouncing it right, I know, I know, I was just a bit edgy there. Um, holy, holy fuck, the little oh. Chinese fella. The so little funny, holy fuck, the little funny Chinese fella. No, okay, all right, well, otherwise, Carl, other than those few negative ones, most people want to see the return of Rockbusters. So, do I okay, tell, go on I tell people what the prizes Let's go. Are? Let's do it. Yeah. Are these the prizes? Yeah, they're the prizes. All right, yeah. let me have a look. We've got the new album from Gold Frap. What's this one here? Oh, uh, I've no idea. Uh, the Yardbirds. A new album from the Yardbirds. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> On VHS, uh, Coogan's Run, the, uh, the, uh, show where different characters make an appearance each week, including, I think, Pauline and Paul Calf. Good stuff. Who the hell wants this? Meg Loss. Uh, a Tom Baker Doctor Who edition. And the only decent thing, really, in the collection, uh, other than Coogan's Run, is the, uh, X List, the, uh, double CD featuring lots of current indie favourites. So, um, not bad, not bad little selection there, Carl. Yeah, Rob well, uh, if you are new, you haven't heard it before, I sort of give a cryptic clue, and then some well, initials. <laughs> I'd say it wasn't, it isn't cryptic. It's, it's like, what am I thinking, that might or might not be the initials that I'm gonna say. That's how you gotta think, really. Yeah. But go on. Do you wanna remind them of any? Spring to mind, just to, as a uh, exploding pet was atomic kitten. Doesn't really work. Mm. Um, uh, what else? I fell down in a puddle in Texas. I got my legs wet. Uh, knelt down in the puddle, got my legs wet. Uh, wet knee Houston doesn't work either. <laughs> wet um, knee Houston, Whitney Houston. Uh, Jamaican uh, uh, swinging a fish round. Uh, Detroit spinners doesn't work <laughs> in the slightest. Doesn't work That's in idea, the slightest. Idea of how they work. So um, there's three of them. You email in. Um, so here we go then. Uh, number one, the gingerbread man has only got one leg. Right? The gingerbread man has only got one leg. Got the it. initials there, LB. LB. LB, right? Okay. Second one, uh, these people from the East Midlands swear a lot. Alright? These people from the East Midlands swear a lot. These people from the East Midlands swear a lot. The okay. initials TTD. Right? And, uh, the third one, have a holiday in Italy. Right? So you've done three then? TB is the initials on that one. So quickly again, the first one, Gingerbread Man's yeah, on. Yeah, I've got on that like one as well. I've LB. got that one. I've got two. These people from the East Midlands swear a lot, TTD. Mm. And, uh, the third one, have a ho holiday in Italy, TB. Email in with what the songs are and you win that stuff. Ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Hang on, it's not the songs, it's the artists, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, just the... <laughs> oh yeah, like, like he said that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, fine. Email only please, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. So we got that going. Yeah, looking forward to uh, the answers on that. Bit of uh, feed would be good, wouldn't it? Alright. I love this one. Placebo and Bitter End. I don't want to contradict you lads, but it's not. We've got a full hour to go on the <laughs> uh, Ricky Gervais show on XFM 104.9. I am Ricky Gervais, the aforementioned Ricky Gervais, with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Rockbusters. <laughs> Oh, ding dong. Oh, who's that? Oh, it's, it's p a posh bloke who doesn't care about poor people. Hello, posh bloke, what are you doing? I'm in my Rolls Royce and I don't like the homeless. Oh, posh bloke, don't be a you want to do that? Satire. That is satire. Yeah. I, I just, I, uh, there's nothing like so it. it's political as well. I'm getting oh, in well, political so many, things. Oh, don't even begin to show off. I, mean, I was showing that foreigners, some foreigners are funny. I got in the fact that, like, if you, if you notice that Chinese people wear different hats to us. Yes. So that's political in a yes. sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. Well, the thing is, Steve, right, that is like what <laughs> I imagine Ricky's house being like when people are ringing the bell. 
Because <laughs> they're all so different, he's got a little- He's obsessed with all my friends being slightly different to each other. I- I've never understood it. He goes, there's no thread. There's no thread to them. All my mates have got a thread running through them. I was even literally after they walk <laughs> out of the home. Yeah. But- what do you mean, my friends all different? Well, that could be. You, it wouldn't surprise me if, if I was round there and the bell went, and I said, "Do you want me to get it?" And he said, "Yeah." And I opened it, and it's you know, uh, what holy fuck, holy <laughs> yeah, he's at the door, right? And then I'd say he's busy, close the door. Bell would go again. Then you got the little gay fella, David Gray. Yeah, and then do you know what I mean? Yeah, not really. No, Cause he's met some of my friends, and he, he looks at them in a weird way. I mean, some of them are weird, but, um, he's just- <laughs> Oh, the other night, right, he's got a thing about Robin, my mate Robin, right, who's a lovely bloke, right, he's going, I can't- I can't be handling him, he talks too much, he talks- you know, Robin sort of goes, blah, 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 and he's- he talks really fast, and he's- he's sort of riffing all the time and that, and it- because it does me head in. Why is he talking like that? And, um, uh, I said, uh, it's Carl going for a drink, I went, uh, he went, Robin's not gonna be there, is he? I went, no. And I was there with, uh, um, Johnny, and, um, I'd set him up, I knew Robin was gonna be there. Robin comes in, sits down and goes, hi, I go, alright, Carl goes out, I'm going. And I, and Robin sort of looks at him, I went, oh, don't be stupid, he went, no, and, and this is in front of Robin, who's confused, Carl goes, uh, points at him, finger, he goes, I said was he gonna be here, uh, you know I don't like him. And That's Robin's uh, um, it was unbelievable. It was That's unbelievable. Appalling. It was unbelievable, Steve. And Robin sort of looked like really genuinely sort of upset. He goes, well, shall I go? I went, no, don't. And Johnny went, oh, Carl, uh, he's a lovely bloke, right? And Carl went, well, no, uh, uh, you know, I'm less annoyed at Robin now, who's done nothing <laughs> no, of course. than you. And I went, look, just ch have a chat. Have a look. He goes, no, it's not worth it. You know, and Robin's going, right. I go, Robin, stay with no. So I, and I made him stay. And in the end, they were getting on, weren't you? Well, yeah, in the end, I can't believe, what were you thinking, Carl? What kind of a despicable man are you? That's a, that's- Why am I the bad one? Of all the things one? you've done, Hang on that is terrible. Why am I the bad one when it's this- it, when it's Ricky's fault that we were both there anyway? <laughs> we all understand <laughs> but it's that the a public rule place. is, you don't say to someone in front of them, I don't like this person, I'm shooting off. I don't think I said it like that. You did, you said, 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 said exactly like that. Yeah, and he was like genuinely confused, and he was sort of like sitting there thinking, "Oh, do I have to take this? What have I done?" And he was upset anyway. He just done a show that didn't. You, you know. are one of those typical manks who are arrogant, and they swagger around the place like I don't need anyone. And I will tell you this: if Suzanne, if you ever lose Suzanne, you are going to be one lonely man. I tell you because you make you make no effort to maintain your friendships. You, you say these sort of things that he's saying to you about Liverpudlians, and I tell you what, I've never met a Liverpudlian as rude as you. You are, you're like the Oasis Brothers, you know, Larry, <laughs> loud, rude, No, but I said, no, Ro Robin's all right, I had a chat with him. He was mm. a bit quieter the other night, he was fed up. I said if he's fed up all the time, I'd be happy. I said, I said- He's fed up because you've just insulted yeah. him! And he said he was all right, he didn't talk much. I said, well, he was upset because he'd been in the show and he was, he was like, he said, he said, he said, well, tell me next time one of his family dies, we'll have another drink. I don't know what you're like, Carl. I don't know what you're like, mate. You are a. Oh, I just think you're. The more the I get to know you, the more I hate you. You're not a good mate with him. You would like taking the fun out of his uh, out of his little thumbs that he's got. <laughs> yeah, but that's like that's my squeezing his head to you, isn't it? I've got different different mates with different parts of the body. Yeah. I like to squeeze your head. I like to look at his thumbs and that. It's weird, you know, because right, I was I was thinking of doing a bit of educating Ricky. Yeah. Right. I'm always looking for stuff, learning stuff, as well as doing another job and that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And w when we went out with Robin, and uh, what does this mean to anyone? Yeah, I'm just having a conversation about people they don't know. Go on. Well, well it's enough, isn't it? His name's Robin. He's got really small thumbs. <laughs> right? He looks a bit like um, Millhouse, doesn't yeah. he? That sums it up. He's like Elephant Man. You know what you get in there, right? Robin, he's got little thumbs, right? So I, came <laughs> so I wonder in, if he's listening. I wanted to do some uh, <laughs> research, and I thought, I wonder if there's anything on small thumbs. Right? <laughs> I found something. Do you know the saying, uh, rule of thumb? Oh, is it an inch? Well, well, it, do you know what the saying oh, is? Oh, is it hitting some, hitting your wife with a stick? Yeah, Okay, apparently. Look, come on, explain. Well, rule of thumb, do you know what that saying means if someone says? Uh, kind of, yeah. Well, it just means, it, it, A rule uh, of thumb, usually, a general rule. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Right. Well, where it actually came from is, years ago, uh, husbands weren't allowed to sort of clout the wife. With oh. anything. <laughs> what was it like in the past? <laughs> I know, you yeah. You couldn't clout your missus. With anything wider than your thumb. That the stick had to be the same, no bigger than your thumb. 
Oh, no, so, thinking, so a big Robin bloke. could do no damage if he <laughs> went out <laughs> with anyone. Yeah. Although it's wide, it's, it's got a little thumb like a little knob, and it? It's like it's truncated, cos it starts off normal. It, it, it looks like he's had, um, his big toes put on his hands. Does he have to drink a pint with two hands? Yeah. Yeah. And he's, he's dropping stuff all the time. Can I just go back to the rule of thumb thing, though? Uh, the idea- what date was this? I'm not asking Carl, I'm looking at Ricky, cos you're not gonna have any idea, Carl, it's just gonna be the past. Yeah. But I like the idea that- I think it's the same sort of day where, I don't know, you- it, you got hung for being homosexual and you could shoot but a Welshman. I just Welshman. Love the idea that there's people, there's blokes beating their wives with shovels, logs of wood, and uh, someone's gone, hang on a minute, everyone, Hold on, wait crazy. a minute, let's have a look at your thumbs. Wait what can minute, we do? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We've gotta have some kind of rule here. I'm all for beating your wife, but let's have some kind of rule, let's give them a sporting chance, yeah. sure. He goes, well, I'll tell you what, what about you can hit her with the width of your thumb? And the wife goes, make it the width of his knob. <laughs> I go, no. He no. slaps her again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. R width of your thumb. All right. <laughs> Better? Yeah. It's like the, um, it's like I always remember seeing in the swimming baths, there used to be, uh, those signs that would say, um, no running, no jumping. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. No bombing. Fair enough. Um, no petting. No petting. It's like you're not allowed to kiss. Yeah. yeah well, and I love the idea that it's probably some kind of lifeguard who sort of maybe saw his ex-girlfriend getting off with some bloke in the water and thought, oh, yeah. no, right. well, there's no petting anymore in here. What do you mean? No petting. You can't, you're not allowed to kiss. Her. Or at, at, at no one. You're not doing this just because no, he used to go- No. Nothing. There's no- there's not a problem. Okay. Not a problem. Just leave and don't kiss. You wanna swim, swim, but don't kiss. There's no- no- look, no petting. Did you just write that on in yeah. yourself in Byron? Yeah. No. What's this no fiddling downstairs in or out the swimming pool? No. No fiddling no. with her downstairs? No, 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 no. no, no. Right. That does annoy yeah. me though. I was saying to Ricky the other night when we were walking somewhere- <laughs> No taking who... her for a drink afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> you can't enforce yeah. that. People who kiss and that in the street- Oh, yeah, people showing their affection for one another. Oh. No, they can hold their hand and that. Yeah. Sure. But it was just- Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, yeah. I see two people eating each other, at, like, in a restaurant or something. Two like people <laughs> eating each other? You know, snogging oh, in right, public, okay. yeah. <laughs> so <it's> that. Uh, <laughs> answers for Rockbusters we're doing them now? Yeah, uh, well, come on then. Well, well no, we, I think let's play a record, let's come uh, back with apparently answers Apparently we got a, what about a bit of Cure? You want a bit of cow? Yeah. We're gonna go wrong. We're gonna go wrong. Ding dong. Oh, here he is. Oh, it's a fat fella with lipstick. Hello. A forest. The cure. XFM 104.9. Good track, isn't it? Oh yeah. Going, going all the way back. All the way back there. Wow, rockbusters. The results. You've had a few real answers, proper answers, I hear. So either I'm wrong or people do think like you. I've got two of them. What are the clues again? Right. Uh, first one was, uh, the gingerbread man has only got one leg. I got that. That was LB. Limp biscuit. Right. Yeah, uh, the that third works. One, the third one that I think you worked out. Yeah. Have, a, have a holiday in Italy. Cheering breaks. TB, cheering breaks. Yeah, this is the one I can't get. If, if this is, if there's a reason why I can't get this, we're not doing rock wrestling. Can again. I give the answer to this one? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. What's the clue? The clue, uh, these people from the East Midlands swear a lot. Yeah. TTB. TTB. The answer. TD. T -D. Yeah, go on. Give the clue again. These people from the East Midlands swear a lot. Tourette's Trent Darby. Right, you're never doing rock wrestles again. Tourette's Trent Darby. <laughs> right, you're not <laughs> doing it. You're never doing- you've blown it. You see, you sneak that one in, you- uh, uh, Yeah, but I, I always like to sort of give to that, you know, a fairly easy and then you, you, you sort of work out the men from the boys then, don't you? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, if I'd have done a character called Tourette's Boy, friend of the little Chinaman, and it went ding dong, oh look, it's Tourette's Boy, friend of, holy fuck, fuck, holy fuck, you'd have been annoyed. Do you know what I mean? Oh, who's your mate, Tourette's Boy, holy fuck? You'd have been annoyed, wouldn't you? Is that a character from Lenny Henry's show? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can't I can't remember if it's Chris Moore's or Lenny Henry. Uh, yeah, one of them. Right. Anyway, the winner, lucky old Richard Perks from Birmingham. He's listening presumably on Sky, and so nice to have him listening. And that's Richard Perks, he's got those answers, all of them right. In fact, most people seem to get uh, Terence Trent Darby or Tourette's mm. Trent Darby. Well, I think that's offensive. Um, if you want to complain, um, what's the number? What's the, what do they write to, to complain about that? Mm. Us uh, using uh, that The same as an person you tell people to write to and tell them I was a knobhead and shouldn't be on the radio. <laughs> Last week when I was away. Did anyone do it? I think a few went through. Did you yeah. listen to the show? I, I listened back to the recording of Did it, Did you yeah. get any emails before you listened to the show? Yeah, when I got in. Did uh, it upset you? What sort of things was it? Just stuff, uh, 
I can't remember. Just uh, it was it was weird because there was like a few of them in a row, and I just thought, what's ha what's happened here? Yeah. And oh, just cause we we said that yeah because you weren't here so <laughs> so what what did you say? I just said uh, phone in. Um, we had we had a couple of genuine emails that liked the show, didn't they? Yeah. And I said phone in um, uh, uh, and leave messages or email Andrew Phillips and Carl Pilkington and just say the show was great. The show was brilliant without him. But they went a bit too far, did they? What did they say then? Oh, I can't remember. I mean, it doesn't bother me because I'm not bothered what people say, am I? No. Do you know what I mean? No, you don't care what- you don't care what you say to people either. Poor little Robin, he looked crushed. Oh, whatever. Whatever! Well, it doesn't matter because he's- he's doing well at what he does. He couldn't he even hitchhike like home because they wouldn't stop because his thumbs didn't show up. He, he couldn't- he had to, he was waiting there for ages by the side of the road. Do you know the difficulty he has buying gloves? <laughs> it's murder for him. <laughs> he, he wears little oven gloves. Yeah. From like Wendy houses. He has to wear- he has to wear Barbie oven gloves. Yeah. Oh. Right, so, uh, yeah, so the winner there, Richard Perks in Birmingham, if you could just email him with your address. There um, was another winner, wasn't there? Um, uh, what was his name? Was it, was his Actually, name? there was one, one person who got all the right answers and there was almost a winner, but his name was Peter Kay. And I like, I like Peter Kay just coming second. So yeah. we gave it to Richard Perks. Yeah. <laughs> Peter Kay. <laughs> there we go. play a record. <laughs> Radiohead. There, there. XFM, 104.9. We drive Steve Mitch and Carl Pilkington. Right, Rockbusters. Well, you blo you know, you shot yourself in the foot with that, so, uh, Tourette's Trent Darby. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, what did you think of first? His name and what words you could put in there? Uh, I normally sort of just go through a Guinness Book of Hit singles and go, right, who can I do? Right. You're giving away a lot of. I mean, that you know, you're an enigma, Carl. I wouldn't give away your workings. I mean, because because then everyone will be able to do it. And what you what you've got now is a gift that people can't really tap into. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> See, that's what that's what <laughs> Lenny Henry and um, Chris Miles's mistake. See, I, I've sort of worked out how they do their comedy, and I'm doing it now. Mm, sure. Do you see what sure. I mean? Now that, you know, I'm, I'm doing- I'm I mean, the only, I think the only way that, that people would start to be able to replicate a lot of what Carl does is if maybe they had a severe blow to their head <laughs> or they were diving and they came up to the surface too quickly. Ding dong! Oh, I'd like a severe blow! I'll oh, get lost, David! <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's have some adverts, quick. <laughs> Steely Dan, reeling in the years. <coughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> look, he's, right, he? look, he's gone to put on his little duffel coat. Yeah. Well, I'm not very well. You look like someone that walks around Forbidden Planet. <laughs> um, Don't say that, that's the ultimate insult. <laughs> <laughs> you can say I look like something that you'd buy in Forbidden Planet, <laughs> but not someone that goes shopping in there. <laughs> Please. The Professor. Oh, the Professor. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, talking about weird looking, um, heads and stuff. Go on. Um, we're, um, doing that cartoon on the internet at the moment, that little cartoon I did of, um, uh, Carl. And the bid's up to Hang on, sorry, that doesn't make any sense to people that don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I did a little cartoon of Carl. And, um, because he doesn't like his picture in the paper, when people request a picture of us, he started sending that off and it's in heat, isn't it? It's gonna be in Jack. And they put it on the internet and they- they're bidding for it, aren't they? Yeah, it's at, uh, 200 quid. That's oh, ridiculous, that's isn't crazy. it? That's so crazy. So what I thought was, we've got- to, we've got to frame it, Carl. We've got to put the copy of Heat in or something. You'll have to- the- the- the winning show, the show that they win on, um, you'll have to do a copy of that. So they, you know what I mean? They get something for their money, I think. I'm- I'm mildly embarrassed. So, uh, it's for a good cause and everything. But, um, didn't someone say 250 if they can come in and watch the show? Yeah. We can't do that, we don't allow people- But what I thought was, what about the winner gets to come in and squeeze your head? So they get in for just, just two minutes, we present them with it. No, yeah. I'm not, no. What do you mean, no? I'm not having strangers coming in squeezing my head. What? You mean it's for charity? It's for charity, Cole. Come on, mate. What, I don't, what are you I like? I don't care. I'm not doing that. I think gonna... even an ill person would say, no, it's all right, I'm not that ill. What do you mean? You don't have to have your head squoze. Yeah, uh, squoes. Squoes! <laughs> you don't have to have your head squoes! All right, let's move on. <laughs> so how are they big then? So, yeah, so how will they know they've won? XFM.co.uk forward slash Ricky, you can see the picture on there. If you're interested, if you think it's worth more than 200 and you've got some money, then you, you send an email in saying I'll give you, you know, 220 quid or something. But are you not gonna let them squeeze your head? So no. we get someone here, the art department here, they're, they're, we're, we're, we frame it up, I'll put a, a little note of like, uh, authenticity, authenticity yeah. Brilliant. A picture of us. Can I have a real picture of you? A little behind Imagine David Dickinson examining that in a couple <laughs> of years' time. <laughs> <laughs> this is as cheap as chips. <laughs> yeah. You can sue him then, cuz he ripped off your phrase a little yeah. bit, didn't he? Yeah. You've been done here, mate. You have uh, more money than sense. Uh, 220 we, quid. I'll tell you what, have we got monkey news today? 
We might, not, we might not get to it, mate. We are running out of time. No, we're doing it. What do you mean, we're doing it? It's- The show isn't complete without it. I'd rather drop adverts and stuff. Well, I'd rather drop adverts. No, we're doing monkey news. Do you like- Rick, my concern is that if you put monkey news on the s- on the subs bench, it's gonna be like David Beckham. Yeah. He's gonna have his eye wandering to other radio yeah, stations. Yeah, And look what- what's- look what he's doing. Yeah, he's he off to Real Madrid. He might be leaving Real Madrid. I might take monkey news off to Radio 2 or something. Yeah. Right? So yeah. don't, don't believe in Monkey I, News. I, on I the imagine bench. if they're listening now, they're probably going to call you and go, Carl, were you serious about bringing Monkey News to Radio 2? Because <laughs> the, the check's open. <laughs> well, do, you, do you want a bit now or what? What, we're what doing? No, I wanted you to tell uh, Steve about your holiday. Because you told me in the week. Go on. Steve, I mean, bad, bad idea. I had a feeling anyway about uh, going away with like Suzanne's mum and dad. Because I've never been into sort of family holidays anyway. Yeah. Right? Uh, even when you see it, wh- whenever I've been on holiday and you see like families on planes and that and they're all having a laugh and a joke, loving it, and then on the plane going back you can see that they've gone off into groups and like, you know, the dad isn't talking to the daughter and all that business. So I thought, asking for trouble, but you know, I, I do everything once. Do you know what I mean? Boxing, <laughs> dancing, yeah. going on holiday with parents and that. Yeah. Give it a go, see how it goes, right? Yeah. So, um Not your A-levels, but fair it, enough. <laughs> it, it started off- it, it started off bad, didn't it? Cause last week I told you that, uh you know, our dad called us up and said, you know, I want to take some tea bags with us to Madeira. Yeah. What's the best way of packing them? Yeah. Right, so I knew there was gonna be problems like that cause the thing with, um, Suzanne's family, right, they- they like having a routine. Mm. They know what they're doing every day. Mm, mm. They know what they're having for tea every day. <laughs> it's the same thing every week and stuff like that. Yeah. So I thought this is gonna be interesting, this, cause they can't do what they normally do. Sure. Right. <laughs> I love it. I love you treating it like an experiment. Yeah. Right. Just watching them all the time. So, um, the first problem was they'd never flown before. So I was winding them up a bit. So oh, it's, it's murder. It's really horrible. Uh, you know, fl- plane goes all over the place. And my mum had done some research saying, well, I've been reading about it and, uh... Well, she got a funny accent. More, more people, uh, more, there's more chance of me being killed on a donkey than there is on a plane. So I upset her. I said, Especially right, when we get there. I said, when we get there, let's see if there's any donkeys on the beach. Yeah. Right? And she didn't like that. So. Oh, what? The joke about you hoping she died? Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's up with her? Right? So we get there and, um, you know, it, it, they see the villa and that. They're quite happy with all that business, yeah. right? And all that stuff. And then as time went on, I was getting a bit sort of fed up with them being around us all the time. Cause yeah, sure. I think you should have your own time when you go on holiday yeah. with course, the yeah. family. You should say, right, you go off and do your thing. Yeah. We'll do our thing and we'll meet up later and talk about what we've been doing and mm. stuff. Mm. Anyway, so it gets to like the Thursday. We've been away since Monday, right? And uh, I said, right, we're going out tonight. So a uh, mum says, yeah, we'll come with you. I said, no, no. It's just us, we're having a bit of time on our own, right? Did you, is it true you said to her, you told me this, you said to her, you started to annoy me, I want to drive my own? Well I just said, well I told her at the start, I said it's gonna be interesting this cause people annoy me when they're around me a lot. Sure. So I wasn't nasty to her, I just was saying people, not her. Oh, right. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm just saying, you're gonna get on my nerves. <laughs> so, um. You hailed a donkey for her. <laughs> <laughs> so, no but, uh, seriously right, with the flying, do you know those stockings? That you can get because of uh, deep vein thrombosis. Probably, sure. She had them on in the cab. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. And it's only a two hour flight as well, so that was annoying me. Right, that so, <laughs> so, um, so anyway, it gets to this, it gets to this, um, you know, the, the, th- the Thursday night when we, when I'm going out with Suzanne. Yeah. And, uh, a mum's like sat, sat on the, on the sun lounger outside, so and so, where are we going tonight? I said, no, like I said, it's just, it's just us, we're going out, having a bit of time to ourselves. So, uh, I could see as the day was getting on, she was realising that she's got a night in with, like, her husband, yeah. right? Uh, she started, her face started to, like, look miserable. Sure. I thought, I'm loving this. Right? <laughs> so I said, right, I'm, uh, I'm going in to go and have a shower, go and, uh, get ready for the tonight, it's gonna be great. And winding them up, just yeah. wind them up because they can't come, because yeah. he said they can't. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I go upstairs, have a, uh, have a shower and that. I come down and, uh, a mum's smiling. Oh, hang on. So I'm thinking, hang on a minute, what's, what's gone on here? So I went to Suzanne, I said, uh, why is your mum smiling? She's, she's not coming. She said, uh, no, but, uh, my dad said he'll, he'll take her out now. 
So in a way, she was happy because she got her own way, yeah. which had annoyed me. That annoyed again. you short because you wanted it's to. Like, oh, well, you don't even want her husband taking her out. <laughs> well, it's just the fact she didn't want to go out. She was happy to stay in and have sausage, egg, and chips that they'd found from some shop that sold English food. Right. So that's almost like what they do if they're sausage, at home. Sausage, egg, and chips. So yeah. she was happy with that if we were staying in and having that. Because we were going out, she was fed up. Right. right. So she's smiling. So she's going, yeah, I'm going out now. So I said, well, enjoy yourself. She said, where are you going? I said, well, it doesn't matter, does it? You don't need to know. Sure. She's yeah. not going to where we're going. Oh, you just don't want us to be in the same restaurant. So yeah, that's right. I said, I want a night out on my own with Suzanne. It's our holiday as well. Yeah. I don't know. I can talk to Amazing. you. Amazing. This is not even his own parents. This is someone else's parents. These are the parents of the women of the woman he loves. But but even Suzanne sort of agreed with me. There's only so much time you can spend with your parents. That's why you leave. That's why when you're ill, you don't go home to them. <laughs> yeah. <sure>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because the slight difference between y y me and you, Carl, is that <laughs> not everyone in the world annoys me. Well, n not everyone does. Just I can see what I was. I felt a bit guilty that week when he said I was annoying him, but I realise it's not my fault now. <laughs> no, everyone annoys him. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it was it was an all right holiday. It was good to get back. <laughs> Brilliant. I uh, won't be doing it again. So. No. And what now would you say is your relationship with Suzanne's parents? Is it, is it a frosty one? Uh. No, I just think they know that I, that I don't like to them, put up them. with them for a long time. Yeah. I mean, when, when we were packing, a man was upset because, like, she really liked the place where we were staying, right? Because it was quite a big villa, because there was a few of us. There was a brother as well with us, right? Yeah. So, uh, a mum said, oh, I love it here. She said, uh, I'm definitely going to book this place again. I said, it's a bit, bit, you know, a bit big for two of you, isn't it? Just being sarky, like, we're yeah. definitely, just- I said, just cause, uh, you know, I won't be coming again. You're like- I don't know what you're like, Carl. You're just- you're a monster. You're an absolute you monster. He wouldn't be able to go, I say as I speak as I find, I say as I- and, and uh, jibbered wap the wibble. Yeah. And never the way will slap. You're like yeah. a middle-aged man. You're like an old man. You're like an old man and you're- and you're what, thirty? I'm just imagine you scraping along in clogs and a flat cap going, Oh, that tree's gotta come down. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Puncturing a kid's ball if he kicks it into your garden by mistake. Yeah. Refusing to give it back. Mm. Yeah, uh, gather round, gather round. Yeah, there were once Chinese kid as airy as that cow, which is weird because there's not many <laughs> Chinese people that are airy, but this one, I tell you, it were back in 1990. Granddad, are you eating a Twix? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's you too. Uh, with or without you, but we've got to cut it a little bit short because we're actually running out of time. It's so jam packed this show. We've got monkey news on the bench. Carl just remembered we've got cheeky freak of the week to fit in. <laughs> I don't know what to do. Um, what's your cheeky freak of the week? Quickly, just throw that away. Right. Well, it's just like you know, we look at we look at cheeky freaks. Uh, Is this show offensive in any way to some people? Do you think? Ding dong. <laughs> 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 got any buns? <laughs> oh, it's uh, the elephant man. Go on. Right, well, it's a bit of a problem for you, this one, Steve, right? I'm chucking it forward to you. Remember the, uh, Cheeky Freak of the Week that we were talking about? Uh, that- that illness where people age quicker? Mm. The five-year-old girl that was older than her mum, mm. mm. and he said to you, w w what, if you ran off like you wouldn't serve her fags and beer, and you went, yeah. no, he went, why not? And you went, cos it's a five-year-old. Yeah. Right? He went, oh, she's got enough problems, give her some fags. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that, yeah, don't you? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, right. So, another dilemma for you. Right, picture this, you're running a restaurant, right, door goes, right, uh, few people, most of them look normal, you know it's the woman at the back, <laughs> crawling on all fours, mm -hmm. uh, top half is woman, right, and this is real, yes. this isn't like a comic or anything, this is on, yeah, on the internet. Yeah, I've seen it, they're called dog people and her legs just come straight down, they're like little, there's been legs at the back and so they walk on all fours because it's easier. Dog people, right? Yeah. You've Not dog people. They're human beings right. with yeah. deformed back legs, so they walk. It's easier for them to get around like that because they can't they can't stand up because they can't stabilise and also it comes straight out of their hips. Right. right. So you're running a restaurant, it's a busy night, you haven't really got time for any hassle. She comes in. Uh-huh. Would you serve her? Um, the premise being what? That he doesn't serve dogs. Because the restaurants don't allow animals in. Right! Sh she Right. Right. So it's a dilemma. It's not a dilemma. Right. She's not a dog. She's a human being. Yeah, with I, put the form so I put, you know, a plate of meatballs <laughs> on the floor <laughs> and she tucks in. <laughs> and a little glass of, you know, a little bowl of wine <laughs> next to it. 
Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he turns around, there's the woman older than... Uh, Go away from that plant! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, service included? Uh, <laughs> oh. oh dear. Okay, so monkey news, please. Alright, alright then. <laughs> Let's hear the jingle. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Right. <laughs> now, before. before oh, I went again, and again. Go on. Oh, chimpanzee that monkey news. Brilliant. Right? Um, right, before I went away. I told you about Alfred. Um, he was the, he was the monkey where there was a, a robbery going on in a bank. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then remember. he nicked the robber's loot and backed out yeah. with a gun. Yeah, he sort of stole, he, he robbed the robber, didn't he? Yeah. Did he take his gun as well? He, he took the weapons, he took all the weapons, there was like a couple of robbers. He managed, because they were so amazed that a monkey was coming in, it was like- Don't what? talk shite twice. Right. Anyway. So anyway, got a follow up to that. Okay, now what was that, that monkey's name? Um, Alfred. That was Alfred. Um, so anyway, um, because a lot of people wanted to know, well, you know, what did he do? Did he go off and have a holiday? Did he, no, no, no. Yeah. Right, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so the follow-up is, what happened is, the monkey had the guns, had the cash, which was $250,000. Sure. Right? It went back to the zoo, right? Uh, you, uh, right, Carl, you're talking shit. Do, you, Ricky, oh. I get angry with you when you won't let oh. him finish his monkey news. Right. Can't we just get out the official Imagine thing. if people were interrupting Trevor McDonald. I don't- It wouldn't happen. I don't want- I want to make sure I don't get anything wrong. No, of course not. Um, no, so, so yeah. check the internet. So, uh, the monkey goes back to the zoo, right, where all the zookeepers come out and go, get him, he's- he's got the guns. Yeah. He hands out a couple of guns to his mates. What? Right. His monkey mates? His monkey mates, so they've all got a couple of guns each. Oh, Carl, uh, Steve, I can't, mate. I can't <laughs> stand it. Honestly, I want to f scream. Please, I really get annoyed with you. They tried to do him a, do him a deal. They said, how about if- uh, I'm going, tell him that, I'm right. not going, no, I can't. Step out for a minute. Okay, we'll just do it. Look, don't listen, step out and I'll paraphrase what, what I hear for you when you come back in. Step out. Now, please, I need to hear, I need to hear well, the end of this. Now, yeah. This is monkey news, this is important right. stuff. Right. Right, Ricky now has left the room, he cannot- he cannot bear to hear, which is surprising to me. Right, so anyway, um, so yeah, they've got the money, mm. and they say to the zookeepers, how about, uh, we'll give you some cash. Yes. And they go- oh. Sorry, well, hang on, sorry, the zookeeper said that to the monkeys? Yeah. Right. No, 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 the monkeys who have got the £250,000. Right. Say to the zookeepers, we'll sort you some money out if you let us go. So right. the monkeys say to the zookeepers, We'll give you some money. Yeah. You don't see any problem with that? Right, listen. Okay. Let, it's nearly finished. <laughs> right, I'm listening out there. You could, this is ridiculous. You go. What do you mean the monkeys say? What do you mean the monkeys say to the zookeeper? They were probably holding the money out, like, kind of going, look, you know, we'll do your deal. Right, okay, come on. Um, and what happened is, I think, uh, I think that I think they were happy with that. I think they left and that was that. They they, they wanted to get out of the zoo because they didn't like it in there. There's the thing. Right, I, I don't. Uh, just have a look. Right, Carl, think. Right, how did they get out in the first place? This one. Just let Steve have a. So why did he go? So he went and robbed. He thought. Uh, what he knew there was going to be a robbery that day, did he? He might have been getting some money before they went to escape, and then that happened, and they had more money. They might have been withdrawing some stuff out. What do you mean? No. If he was planning on leaving the zoo, he's going to get his savings. What are you talking about? What have you read there, Steve? I, I've got a, I've got a feeling this is a review of one of the Planet of the Apes films. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's Escape from the Planet of the Apes. I can, I'm not certain. It could be Beneath the Planet of the Apes. Right. What I mean, Carl, think, think, please think. Right. So this this monkey, right, he leaves the zoo, right. He, so he leaves the zoo, which he can do presumably. What they leave him the keys or what? They're chatting to him, they might as well. He goes to a bank, what, what's he, what's he thinking of doing? Sees a robbery, probably by chance. He probably wasn't tipped off, was he? Or has he got one of those police scanners? Probably got one of those police scanners, didn't Well, he? I think he was going to the bank to get a mortgage to, uh, build a, a <laughs> sorry, I think he wanted an extension, didn't he, on his, uh, cage? Think of that. And so, he, I love the fact that he hands out the guns and they do a deal. <laughs> it's, uh, honestly, <laughs> you've got the best, you've got the best mind w working on radio today. It's incredible. So the only person who makes less sense is Terry Wogan. <laughs>
Oh, it goes up and down, I doesn't don't know it? What you're I about. can't understand his sentences because I don't know. No. It's wh- like freeform poetry. Yes, I don't know whether it's the end of a sentence in the middle, it's it's not a new one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's it, have the jingle again, a record, and then we'll uh, probably have to wrap up the show. I imagine. That was oh, chimpanzee, that monkey news. Well, Mr. Stipe, uh, I am not Kenneth, but I can tell you the frequency was one oh four point nine. See you next week. Oh, I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Do you think that when Marconi invented radio, this was what he had in mind for it? <laughs> yeah, two hours of absolute. See you later. Excellent.